The, the Crusades are controversial because they were launched by the Pope. If it weren't for that, they would be seen as one more chapter, and not a very important chapter, in the thousand year struggle between North Africa and the Middle East against Europe. Uh, no more than that. It was a, it's a long war, and uh, it's been going, it went on for over a thousand years, and until the West finally won in terms of military, um, in, in the military terms. So the Crusades are a subject often raised by critics of the church. I'm sure you've all seen that. And some, I've, some of the phrases that I've taken from books, a ruthless church driving Europe into a barbaric war of aggression and plunder against a peaceful Islamic population of the Holy Land. A church-sponsored invasion and slaughter that descended into a massacre of Jerusalem and the sack of Constantinople. The forced conversion to Catholicism via a holy war. Religious orders dedicated to warfare, the popes using crusades against the pagans in northeastern Europe, against heretics in France, and against their political enemies. Also, uh, people say that the church has to assume responsibility for the passions that the crusades aroused and the excesses that, and the atrocities that were committed, even if they weren't directly willed by the church. And also, the last. Um, the last uh, accusation is that it rendered definitive the schism with the Oriental churches, with the, with the Orthodox, which until that time could have been perhaps uh, healed. So what were the Crusades? The Crusade was a military expedition authorized by the Pope, sworn to with an oath. It was accompanied by indulgences and other spiritual favors. It was originally to the Middle East, and it was considered in canon law a pilgrimage. So it was an armed pilgrimage, basically. So a knight would go there with other knights in order to try to free the Holy Land from, from the, uh, the Muslims who were holding it. Just a brief history here. Uh, the first crusade was preached in 1095 by Urban II. The crusaders set out from France in 1096. A series of military victories culminating in the taking of Jerusalem in 1099. From there on, it's all downhill. They lose Edessa in the 10, 1144. This gives rise to the Second Crusade in 1147, which doesn't do uh, doesn't do very much. In 1187, Jerusalem fell to Saladin. This launched the Third Crusade, which did not succeed in retaking Jerusalem. The Fourth Crusade was in 1204. It resulted in the fall of Constantinople, which was not a Muslim uh, city but a Christian city. In 1250 and in 1270, St. Louis had two, his two crusades. In 1291, the last crusader stronghold in the Holy Land fell. So there was a period of 200 years, from 1095 to 1291. The cru how many crusades were there? Well, we don't, you can't really uh, put a number on them because there was a constant flow of knights and armed soldiers from Europe to the Holy Land, and they would go there, they would stay there for a while and they would come back. When the number going together was big enough that we called a crusade, but historians don't always agree on which ones uh, constituted a crusade or not. How big were the crusading armies? Uh, at its height, are fighting the biggest crusades, and the, the, the biggest crusading armies of any one time would have been composed of, of up to 5,000 knights supported by 25,000 foot soldiers. So 30,000 people would be the, the biggest possible number you would have. Normally it would be much less than that. Normally it would be several hundred knights or perhaps a thousand knights and usually five times that number um, as uh, accompanying foot soldiers. Now that first crusade, as I said, was spectacularly successful. It fired the imagination of Europe. It led to the other crusades. If it had failed, probably there wouldn't have been any more. But it was spectacular. They, they succeeded beyond all expectations against huge odds. They managed to, uh, to win one victory after another, and they mean, managed to take Jerusalem. So what was the pope uh, doing preaching a war, inciting men to violence? We can't imagine Benedict XVI calling on Christian armies to attack the Middle East or anything like this, right? So it's, times have changed, obviously. Uh, the church, over the centuries, had had to disengage from the political power to see more clearly that force and violence are not the way to go. 
But in the Middle Ages, as you know, the church was very much caught up with the political power. So we have to understand that changes in historical circumstances are going to lead to changes in the shape of society. And, and uh, it has met, the church exists in a culture, in a society. Right? So this, you have to keep this in mind as we go along. Let's look at the political situation in Europe. From the year around 830 AD until 950 AD, so about 100 years there, you have Europe is invaded. It's, an, it's a terrible time. We know very little about the time because the communications completely break down. Um, but it's basically, as I was saying this morning, invasions from the north by the Vikings and Normans, invasions from the south by the Muslims, invasions from the east by the Magyars, and uh, no one is really safe. So, Europe sort of hunkers down, feudalism, people are in their castles and just trying to survive. By 950, the situation had improved, but um, the problem was this. That the, these tribes that had invaded the empire and uh, repeatedly, they had a warrior tradition. The great challenge of the church was not only to convert these people, but to turn the warrior people into Christians, to make them understand that, uh, that violence had to be restrained. By 950, as I said, the, the situation had improved, but the armed bands, these small armies, did not disarm. They had no external enemy anymore. If they, people had settled down, the Muslims had been defeated, the Magyars had been defeated, the Vikings had uh, settled down also in parts of France and, and in Sicily. So there was no longer an external enemy that had to be fought. So what they did was start fighting each other. So you had territorial disputes. Every local lord had his own little army. They were fighting against each other. There was interminable warfare. There was vendettas. So uh, they were attacking anyone who they found. It was a very bad situation. So the popes intervened here in three ways. One was called the peace, the peace of God. There was the truce of God. And there was the crusades. So the it was an attempt by the popes to try to channel the energies of, the, of these outlaws, these outlaw barons, into a more useful end, and finally to get them out of Europe and into, the, uh, into doing something useful. So the peace of God, which started in the year 975 AD, what the church did was to place unarmed merchants, women, children, peasants and pilgrims, travelers and clergy under its protection. Anyone who attacked these people was to be excommunicated. And the church also encouraged knights to use their arms to protect these people. So this notion of chivalry. And so the church wanted knights to use their arms, use their martial prowess, <coughs> not, in the, not to attack people, but to defend those who needed defending. So it was an attempt, as I say, to bring the warrior tradition of the Germanic peoples who had invaded the empire into the Christian tradition. Use your arms, use your military power for good and not for evil. So by making peace a religious cause, the church made fighting to safeguard peace a religious duty. So the knight had a duty you know, to try to safeguard people who were defenseless. And that was a key piece in the future notion of the Crusades, where, uh, in, the, in the Christian Holy War. The truce of God was meant to try to prevent private warfare among the feudal lords. So the church wanted to reduce the number of days in which one could fight. So for, to begin with, for example, it, it said that you could not do battle on Sundays. That was the Lord's Day. So that was excluded. Then it, in, it, it uh, extended that. You couldn't do battle on holy days, so obligation, of course, because that, you can't do that. And then you couldn't fight during Lent or Advent. And you couldn't fight during Christmas time. So in the end, there were only 80 days in the year left in which it was allowed to attack your neighbor and, and, do, and do battle. 